All right, I want to talk to you today about why dispensational Christians defend Israel. All right. Now, there are two different types of Christians that we need to define right off the bat here. First, you have the false Christian, and I have that in quotations there, Christian Catholics. Secondly, we have true Christians. The difference is we hold to the Bible, true Christians. This one over here, they do not. Let me demonstrate. First of all, the false Christians, number one, point number one, they are non-dispensational. I'll explain that in a minute. Over here, the true Christians are dispensational. Now, you say, what's this dispensational thing all about? Well, as a Bible-believing Christian, truly saved Christian, over here on this side, we understand that there are two parts to our Bible. Old Testament over here, New Testament over here. And then we also understand that there are divisions within each of those. Obviously, what was going on in the Garden of Eden is not the same thing that was going on when Moses was given the law. And so, too, in the New Testament, there are things that are going on there with different dispensations. A dispensation is when God dispenses rules and laws to man. So there are dispensations that are different. There are seven of them, I believe. Okay? So, that's a big difference there. And to the Jews out there, if you're watching this, let me just tell you in the future, the most important thing that you need to ask somebody when they say, I'm a Christian, ask them if they are dispensational. And if they vehemently say, I am non-dispensational, you are dealing with this side over here. You will never see a Roman Catholic that is dispensational. I've never met one. And I'm going to show you the importance of that. Number two. The false Christian Catholic teaches that the Bible was, was Jewish, but now belongs to the church. It's the property of the church. Whereas a dispensational Christian will say the whole Bible is a Jewish book. We understand the whole book is about the Jews. As Gentiles were born in with a spirit of adoption into the promises that God made to Abraham, we have those things, we're, we're born into that, but we're, we have a spirit of adoption. We haven't taken over, all right? This book is not against the Jews in the sense of hating them as a people, which I'll demonstrate as we continue. This book is pro-Jewish, and this group over here hates that fact. Number three, this group over here, false Christian Catholics, number three, the church replaced... Israel, call that replacement theology. Over here, the church defends Israel. We do not teach that the church, the Christian church now came in with Jesus Christ, and now the church, he got rid of Israel, and now the church is there for the whole future. Uh-uh, no. We are in a very small time period here called the church age, many scholars would call it that, where God is dealing with both Jews and Gentiles. That is going to end soon at the rapture. And then God turns his attention back to Israel, back to the nation of Israel. But let's continue. Number four, Jews have no right to the land. If they've been replaced, the church now should have control of the land of Israel, specifically the city of Jerusalem. And that's exactly what the Catholic Church is doing. The Catholic Church controls the city of Jerusalem. It's their city. They're the ones that want the third temple for their own purposes, which is spoken of in the New Testament and ironically back in the book of Daniel. The man of sin, the Antichrist, coming in, he's going to take over that temple eventually. But you see, these false Catholics here, these are fake Christians, they believe that the Jews have no right to that land. Whereas Bible-believing Christians, we believe that living on the land is part of prophecy. It's an imperative of Scripture for the Jews to go back to their homeland. That's the key to the New Testament being fulfilled. Let's continue. Number five, false Catholic Christians, you know, false Catholics, we'll, you know, we'll just say they're Catholics, false Christians. Number five, they teach, next we have the Great Tribulation. Whereas Bible-believing Christians say, no, it's the time of Jacob's trouble. 
Jacob being Israel. Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 7 is where that term comes from. It's a Bible term. This term over here, the Great Tribulation as a title, appears nowhere in the King James Bible. Nowhere. A description, then shall be Great Tribulation. That's the words of Jesus in Matthew chapter 24. But nowhere, nowhere, nowhere does it ever say the Great Tribulation as a title. Never. But you see, false Christian Catholics, they can change the Bible whenever they want because they believe it's their property. And it is most certainly not. Number six, the church is purified before Christ returns. That's what this group over here teaches. They teach that this time period is coming, this great tribulation, they teach that it's for the purification of the church. Whereas Bible believers say, no, it's actually for the Jews. The Jews are purified before Christ returns. That's what the New Testament teaches. It's the time of Jacob's trouble. Lines up perfectly with the Old Testament. Next, we have number seven. The synagogue of Satan in Revelation chapter 2, verse 9, and Revelation chapter 3, verse 9. This group over here teaches that the synagogue of Satan is the Jews. Bible-believing Christians, on the other hand, teach that the synagogue of Satan is over here, Catholicism. They which say they are Jews and are not. You see? Works out pretty well. Number eight. This group over here says that Jews control the world. The Zionist conspiracy. They'll say the Jews run everything. Now I'll grant you there are some very rich and powerful Jews, but the reality of it is Rome controls the world. Mystery Babylon, Revelation chapter 17 and 18. Mystery Babylon is the one that controls the whole world. Roman Catholicism, through all their knighthoods and orders, they control the world. High-ranking Jews are subservient to the Pope of Rome through Freemasonry and through a lot of other organizations. Masonic Jews are all subservient to the Pope of Rome. This is the reality here. This over here, Jews controlling the world, that's not reality. Okay, number nine. This group over here of false Christian Catholics promotes integration. They want all the races to get together and blend together so that there's no more distinction. Just exactly what happened back in the book of Genesis after the flood, Tower of Babel. God split it up. God does not want integration. Over here, Bible-believing Christians, we promote segregation. We do not promote racism. Racism says, my race is superior to yours and you should be eliminated. That's not what Bible-believing Christians are saying when we promote segregation. We are saying God created the different kindreds of people, the different ethnicities of people, and He wants them to be separate. Again, I've done studies on this. And you will see false Christian Catholics not only promoting integration, but practicing integration. They have no, no problem with interracial marriages and blending and blending of people. They will send in Syrian refugees into countries to intermarry and to impregnate the women. Why? Because they want integration. They want to destroy what God created. God created the different races, the ethnicities. He wants them separate. Number 10. False Christian Catholics will say Israel should have less land. Whereas a Bible-believing Christian, we say, no, they actually should have more land over there in Israel. Right now, there's a big fight going on. Well, we need this two-state solution and all this other stuff. And the reality of it is, they're trying to take away more of Israel's land. The disputed part that was taken there in, in the war and things back in the 1960s, they're saying, oh, no, that's that was... Uh, illegally taken and you should give it back to the Palestinians. They need to have a, their homeland and everything else there. We're going to talk about that here in just a minute. But the fact is, Bible believers say, no, actually, the original land grant that God promised to Abraham and to his seed, his physical seed, that original land grant is a lot bigger than what the Jews currently control. And I understand that there's issues with the nation of Israel, there's some very wicked things going on there and everything else. And as a Bible believer, we do not support everything that the Jews do in Israel. We do not support them when they attack Jesus Christ. What we support is, what we defend is, we defend their right to the land. 
they have a right to the land. They, are, they have a legal right to be there. You say, what's the legal right? Oh, just the greatest written document that's ever been, the Holy Bible. And when all these people, when this group of Satanists over here, these devil worshippers over here, when they say the Jews should be off that land, they are thumbing their noses at this book and at the God of heaven who inspired that book. And you'll not find, by the way, to the Jews out there, you will not find one verse of Scripture that says you have no right to the land. You'll not find one in the New Testament. The New Testament's not against you. Finally, number 11, this group over here will deny the Holocaust. They do it all the time. Oh, there weren't really 6 million Jews that got killed. Hitler couldn't have cremated as many in the crematorium and all this other stuff. They'll deny what they've done to the Jews. Not only the Holocaust, the Crusades, they'll deny it. Well, there was some Jews that we've killed. Maybe it was a mistake, but you know, not, not that many. And by the way, this group over here, also not only did they kill the Jews down through the last almost 2,000 years, they've also killed us, Bible-believing Christians. They're murderers. And they'll deny it. They'll say, well, um, Fox's Book of Martyrs, Christian Martyrs, that's Protestant propaganda. Uh, there was no real Holocaust. They deny it. They're murderers. Whereas a Bible-believing Christian, we look at the Holocaust and we say, yeah, absolutely, I believe it. I believe that they killed 6 million Jews, probably even more. I have no idea. But I've heard eyewitness testimonies, Ben David Liu, a Jew that went through it and got saved, became a Bible-believing Christian. He's over here on this side now, you know. And he said he was there. He saw it. Lost his whole family. Yeah. It happened. Why did it happen? Because the people that ran the Holocaust is this group right here. Roman Catholic. Hitler. Catholic. Goebbels. Catholic. Himmler. All these guys down through. Catholics. Nazi Germany signed a concordant with the Vatican. Franz von Papen and Pope Pius XII signed a concordant together. And they, that was before the war, before World War II. Same thing with Mussolini. Same thing with Franco in Spain. And yet the Pope was never tried as a war criminal. The Pope was behind the slaughter of the Jews. Not Bible-believing Christians. So please to all the Jews out there, when you say Christianity has attacked uh, Jews down through the centuries, please define which group you're talking about. You're talking about this group over here. They're Catholics. They're not really Christians. They're fake Christians. Just going to go over four other points to consider. I'm not going to go through these scriptures for sake of time. You can look these up on your own. But uh, some points to consider with this study. Number one, Jesus gives a prophecy in Matthew chapter 24 about the destruction and rebirth of Israel. Now, if Israel is gone and there's no more and stuff like this, like this group over here says... Why would there be a prophecy about them being reborn? Kind of weird. Number two, Ezekiel chapter 36, verses 16 through 38, says that the Jews will be coming back in unbelief. God's going to bring them back for His name's sake. So anybody out there that's on this group over here and says, well, the Jews right now, they hate Jesus, they reject Jesus. Yes, that's the, that's the whole point of this, the time of Jacob's trouble. There's no point in putting save people through another time of purification like this satanic group over here says with their great tribulation to purify the church you know the roman catholic form of purification self-flagellation and they do it look up the philippines sometime and watch them going down the streets whipping themselves over the back till there's blood running down their back that's this satanic group here Christ's death on the cross wasn't enough. You have to continue to eat his flesh and drink his blood over and over and over and over and over again. That's not our group. If you're Jewish, don't lump us in with them. And let me tell you something too. If you're Jewish, you might want to get the help of us in the future. Because there's a lot of people turning against you right now. Number three, point number three. In Galatians chapter 4, verses 30 through 31... Paul is talking about the two covenants that were made in Mount Sinai there. 
one with Hagar and her descendants through Ishmael, and one with Sarah and her descendants through Isaac. And he says, actually says, that the Arabs, the son, the, those of the bondwoman, that they will be cast out of the promised land. Cast out the bondwoman and her son. Cast them out. This land belongs to the Jews, the land of Israel. The Palestinians over there should be cast out. If you believe the book, you see. Number four, if you want a scripture talking about this whole thing of replacement theology and things like this, that can totally debunk that whole thing and lines up with this system of belief right here, read Romans chapter 11. These Satanists over here, they'll read it and they'll try to twist it. They can't go with the literal meaning of Romans chapter 11. They can't stand Romans chapter 11. They hate it. Why? Because it defends Israel. You understand? So as times get worse and worse and worse for the Jews and we get near to the time of Jacob's trouble, the church is going to be leaving at some point in time. And the Jews are going to be going into that time period. You're going to have to make sure, see this group over here? We're leaving. We're going to be gone. You're going to be left with these monsters. These monsters that have persecuted the Jews for centuries. They're going to be the ones that are going to come after you. They're not your friends. All right? And when I see this stuff, st stuff about, oh, well, the, the Jews have no right to the land over there and, it, and they shouldn't be building, you know, settling that land and things because it was stolen. And it's not stolen. It's their land because the Bible says so. The church has no right to that land. This false church over here, they have no right to it. And Bible-believing Christians, we don't want the land either. We want it for the Jews. We are saying, hey, it's the fulfillment of prophecy. We thank the Lord when we see the Jews getting more of that land. I'm glad that things have worked out, that this UN sanction thing that they were trying to put on with the John Kerry and Obama and all this stuff, I'm glad that that's been lifted now under Donald Trump. But you see the little uh, pig in the poke, so to speak, here? Um, is the fact that Donald Trump is Jesuit trained. He's on this side. And Mike Pence is an evangelical Catholic. They're on this side, brethren. And to the Jews, they're on this side. You say, well, I think we can trust them. You're being deceived. You better put your faith in Jesus Christ and get a New Testament, a King James Bible. Again, the other one, if you're English speaking, the other one, the other ones, all the NA, NIV, NASB, all those other things, they come from this side. Their manuscripts for the New Testament are Egyptian. They're Greek text. This one over here, it's Syrian, the text, where the Jewish disciples went. They had to flee from Roman persecution, you know. And a lot of the, the Jews of the first century, too, that were into the wicked, uh, a lot of the wicked Babylonian practices, they fled to Antioch. Acts chapter 11, verse 26. The Jewish disciples are called Christians first there. All right? So, it's a very, very important issue. But I just want to make this thing very, very clear. Dispensational Christians, those of us that are on this side over here, Bible-believing, King James Bible-believing dispensational Christians, we support Israel's right to that land. And we'll defend their right to that land. If you hear of Christians that are saying, hey, that land belongs to the Palestinians and they need their own state and things like this. This is who you're dealing with over here. All right. Please search these things out. Get a King James Bible. If you're Jewish, read it. Read it. See if it's really that, you know, attacking the Jews. It's not. It's attacking this system over here. That's going to be it. Thank you for watching.